Okay, all eyes are still on China as um, Chinese Communist Party had their 19th Congress last week and Xi Jinping, uh, their leader, actually made a three and a half hour speech in which he mentioned property. Uh, he did that apparently 12 and 18 months ago, but he made a, a very good point that I um, tend to agree to. So um, have a look. I mean, three and a half hours. Um, I feel sorry for all those people having to listen to it uh, in the auditorium, as you can see. It's almost unreal, the number of people in the Congress uh, and just the order in which they uh, conduct the business day. China's leader says the outlook is extremely bright, but the challenges are also extremely grim at what many analysts are calling the country's most important meeting in 40 years. President Xi Jinping attempting to solidify his hold on the country at the 19th Communist Party Congress. Xi is accepting a second term as party leader, but there is speculation he will also lay the groundwork for a third, making him the longest ruling and most powerful leader of the country since Chairman Mao. He's also stamping his authority on the country's economic agenda. In his opening address, President Xi Jinping said China will relax market access for overseas investment and expand access to its giant services sector. But he's also taken a swipe at property investors, stating housing is for living in, not for speculating. But he's also taken a swipe at property investors, stating housing is for living in, not for speculating. Longtime China watcher Tim Murray spent 19 years living and working in China. He's the co-founder of J Capital Research, dealing in equities and financial services with a focus on the world's second biggest economy. I spoke to Tim Murray earlier. All right. Now, as far as uh, talking about the property and, and calling it uh, the property is not for speculation, it's for living in. Uh, I have thought about it. Who cares what I thought about? But anyway, uh, maybe I'm clinging on to things that I see on the Internet and the news where uh, these opinions coincide with my own opinion. But when you think about it, why is a residential property an investment? Uh, it's not a productive asset. It is something that gives you income through the rent, but it's something to be living in. You can't be speculating on something that is essential. Imagine people speculating on bread and butter and milk, and which they do in the, you know, the uh, commodities exchanges, but to a point, they, they're not speculating where they're trying to make, make huge amount of money like they do with the property. It's essential. People need it. People need shelter. So how can you be speculating about it? And I think that at some stage the government is going to turn around and uh, kind of uh, tell the property investors that they can't expect uh, this continuous growth and the continuous income because it's so important to a lot of people that will at some stage not be able to afford it. Uh, so they will turn around, they will declare it uh, as the essential in my opinion, and the uh, super profits that uh, property investors have um, experienced will probably cease to exist. Uh, but let's see what this, uh, this man um, who knows China very well and who's lived there for a long time thinks about the, the latest 19th Communist Party Congress uh, and what he thinks about uh, whether China is going to deliver what Xi Jinping is saying suggesting that if the country is going to be more open to foreign investment, this would seem to suggest that this is good news for foreign firms, right? Um, whilst he may say that, the uh, policies that he's articulating, the Made in China uh, 2025 policy, is a policy for uh, industry uh, stimulus uh, to direct the economy. And that will be a bias away from uh, foreign enterprises and towards domestic enterprises. So it's hard to reconcile what he's saying in his speech with the actions that he's putting into place with industry policy. He's putting 300 billion US dollars behind that industry policy. So I think the, the policies that are pursuing are not consistent with the view that they're trying to attract foreign capital. So this is effectively lip service? Correct. 
let's turn to another contentious issue, which was his comments around housing. Now, this might surprise some people, but he called out property investors and suggested that housing should be for living in, not for speculation. Does this mean we're going to see some reform, not only in the Chinese housing market, but potentially that Chinese investors going elsewhere, including in Australia? Uh, so there are two separate issues. On the first one, um, this comment by Xi Jinping has been made before. At least uh, 12 to 18 months ago, he was saying exactly the same thing. Um, there um, have been uh, a clampdown on uh, property um, for 12 months to try and uh, stem the bubble in the property market where in Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities, prices have increased by more than 40% in under 12 months. Um, and so this idea is to um, stop speculation in property um, and to make housing available to more people. Now, our research is showing that one of the major components of property construction this year has been social housing and renovation of old housing. So um, there's two elements to that policy which is already well and truly underway. One is to control speculation. The second is to use state-directed investment to put housing in place for a lower income. We've been waiting for this particular Congress for a very long time. You think it's just pure speculation that this was setting him up for a third term. I guess we'll see by the end of this week what what apparatus he's put in place. But the, the suggestion has been until this Congress was over, any of the bad news out of the Chinese economy had to be pushed back. Do you think there is a chance that once we see this finish up that some of the bad news will start to filter out? You won't see an immediate sort of downturn in the economy. I think the economy for this year has peaked. Um, it's very much driven by uh, fiscal stimulus um, in infrastructure and the high level of expenditure on infrastructure will continue into next year. The big change for the economy is the downturn in property construction, which is linked to the earlier comments about controlling speculation. That is reducing the amount of uh, property construction. Um, and so that will be a drag on the economy going forward. And when does that hit in, do you think? Is that mid-next year that we're going to see potential crunch time? Um, I think we'll see a slowing of growth in the fourth quarter. Um, I think we'll see an acceleration of that slowdown. Um, in the first quarter, and I think we'll see new stimulus measures come in to fight that. But how long can you keep trying to stimulate this economy? We know it's already at record levels of debt. There has to be a crunch time coming, there, coming doesn't it? Yes, um, but each time I've been willing to say that's imminent, um, it's been avoided. Um, I would have said the same in 2012. Um, I think the current measures, the um, government is choosing to use to stimulate the economy are quite smart. Um, they're directly financing infrastructure, which is holding up the whole economy. Now, that is having diminishing returns. They're having to spend a lot more uh, to get the same amount of growth. Um, but it is effective, and it has helped them to um, control the exchange rate and capital flight because they've had to rely less on monetary stimulus in the economy. Um, so I think the They've still got a few tools left in the bag, um, and this current method of directly financing infrastructure to hold the economy up, I think that's got at least another 12 months of being fairly effective in the economy. Tim Murray, thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, this uh, Tim Murray, this man, doesn't seem to be very confident in uh, Chinese leadership um, ability to continue to keep this bubble going. He's also not very confident in um, how honest uh, the Chinese and Xi Jinping yeah, and the Chinese uh, Communist Party is, how honest they are about the state of the current economy and what they're going to do about it. But he is saying that they're doing a really good uh, job because most people expected China to kind of pretty much blow up as far as the economy but that hasn't happened so they seem to be doing a good job how long can that go for he just mentioned another 12 months but um, it's anybody's guess